the sun rise is just starting. Uh, as you know, I'm documenting and keeping some sort of diary updates about meditating in the morning. So I've become what I like to say is somewhat disciplined at getting up at 6.30 in the morning. My first thing I do though is have um, some coffee because I found that if I dive straight into meditation, it doesn't work very well. But I wanted to talk about today's session because it was really interesting and quite an emotional one. So just to go back, you know, I've been meditating since I was 16, laying down, which is really easy on the body and very relaxing. And I've found places of absolute enlightenment in that area. So now I'm moving it through to say yogic meditation, which is a lot to do with my breathing and a lot to do with my posture and the way that I'm sitting. Now I've been crossing my legs over and within 15 minutes, you know, this foot here has gone completely numb. So I found on the days that I'm not getting up at 6.30, which is my two weekends, my weekend days, um, I am doing yoga before I'm doing the meditation and uh, I find that that's better for my posture because I'm looser and I'm already, you know, my hips have been stretched and my Achilles have been stretched. So I'm finding that a lot better meditation because of the sequence. So you, you would think I would get up at 6.30 and do yoga first, but I find that my body just goes, yeah, not, not ready. But I wanted really just to tell you about what happened today. So... I decided to be a little less intense with my body today. I'm usually focusing on my body, my posture and my breathing and listening to the music. So trying to become unified with the music. So the focal point is the music. So really any yogi or any person who meditates is really trying to become one with an essence of something, whereas we absorb the energy or you absorb, you know, you may just be looking at a tree and you become the tree. And it's funny that when I've done that kind of meditation where I become the tree, quite often in other situations where I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, I will imagine I'm the tree and I find that I am grounded. So today um, I lightened up a little bit. And so instead of having both my feet up the top, I actually did that, which meant that I wasn't having any physical pain at all. Um, I found that my posture was quite good and all that. So it gave me a little, I suppose, breather to use my imagination, which I'm really good at. So today I actually took, I stole it from a dream I had last night. So in my dream, I had this little cottage and my children had moved back in with me. And on the outside of the cottage had, there had been a huge big room built on that was four times the size of the cottage. It was one room and it was all glass. And on the side of that, on the way exited, you went through a little, it was almost like a greenhouse. So there was all these little plants and orchids and uh, things were being grown in this greenhouse. And as, as you ent went outside, it was just the most beautiful garden. It was manicured, it, the trees were well grown. It looked like a park, right? So this was my new home in my dream. Now, it's funny that I am a house sitter, but I'm dreaming about the security of a home and my children being there and all those things that ground you and things that, you know, you, you fear when you move away that you'll lose that because you don't have your children anymore. So um, I brought that into my meditation today and I'm going to try not to get emotional because you know I get emotional about stuff. So in the meditation, in this glass room, um, suddenly all the people that I've loved and love started to come in. So family came in, my friends came in and I, and we were hugging and we were kissing and they were bringing food in. And this was my imagination. This was now part of the meditation. And then I suddenly realized that everybody was coming in, the good, the bad, the ugly, everyone was coming in. And I was so welcoming to them. And I was so um, abundant with human beings. Everybody I had physically touched came into the room. The room filled up and then suddenly when I looked outside this glass window, the whole park of garden was filled with people that I had met. Either even the smallest little interactions on the street. People I'd given um, you know, instructions to go somewhere on the road arrived. Everybody was there. And I just started to feel my body get filled up and filled up. And the people that had hurt me so bad in life, you know, people that had almost ruined me were there. And I was hugging them and 
thanking them for coming, you know, and being part of my life. And I suddenly realized that the glass house had become me looking out, looking in. And, and there were many people there and I made sure I was pulling in the people that, you know, I was at the door going, come in, come in. And I suddenly realized that everybody has um, a character to play, a part to play. And they might be the villain and they might be the lover and they might be the friend and they all have their role and they've all played it exceptionally good. And I suddenly realized how um, everybody had a part to play to get to where I was this morning meditating in front of a log fire looking out as the sun rose do you know like everybody has this magnificent role to play and everybody when i looked at them i had no feelings of anger towards anybody and i suddenly realized just um it was all gone i had let it all go and it was magnificent. And I realized that when you get to a place of peace and contentment, and look, I've got a long way to go, you know, a long way to go, particularly where I'm wanting to go to. Um, but compared to yesterday, Joe, 10 years ago, Joe, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, Joe, I mean, the person that I've become today is so full of love and peacefulness and contentment. Now, I'm not saying that in reality, I'm going to let these people back in the house because no, because today's Joe has boundaries and today's Joe, I will, uh, and you know, this, I don't think I forgave. I don't, I was, I find that an interesting concept to forgive, right? And forget. I get it as a theory, but I don't think it's what happens i actually think what happens is an acceptance that it is what it is that it had its it had its role to play and therefore there is no need to forgive because suddenly the emotional component falls out and it becomes a logical intellectual component rather than the forgiveness and emotion that comes with that certainly the emotional part has to make its play you know like you've got to get through that reactive emotion stage to get to be able to step out and look in and then move forwards right but i think my journey began obviously the day you're born but i think for me particularly the last two years i've been practicing what i call hexing with love which is where you the person that you'd love to hex because they're a prick do you know or they're causing you grief is the person who most needs the love from you right so love being more of an energy component rather than oh a heart chakra component so like um what i would do is i would find something that i absolutely purely love and fills me up with joy i would become a balloon and then I would send the balloon to them and have it pop over them. Now you may say that's crazy, right? But it's it's the it's the ultimate selfness, right? In a selfishness way, because what you're doing is ultimately becoming kinder, filling yourself up, releasing them from your energies. So you're sending them this abundance of love, right? And as witches, you know, we're all about, you know, you can manipulate energy, particularly other people's energies, if they're unaware of it, right? So by sending them this, because they're not expecting you to send them love, they're expecting you to send them hate and resentment. And, you know, they're filling up potentially in that control space. So what you're doing is sending massive amounts of love, popping the balloon over them and sending almost like infiltrating. It's a bit like war. You're infiltrating their energy levels. So suddenly, you know, they're getting they're feeling more in love. They're feeling better. They're feeling healthier. So they're less likely to be resentful and nasty and horrible and staying in this passion that they've created. And therefore, the energy that's been created between the two of you breaks away and you release them, right? So I've been doing that so much the last two years to people. And then finally today, I feel like, wow, maybe you have achieved my goal. Um, and it was really interesting that yesterday, someone who looked almost identical to someone who hurt me terribly, um, where once, you know, once upon a time when I saw them, it would be two days in bed where I would just shut down 
I would, uh, the trauma was intense and I would take two days to be able to get back out of bed and face the world again. So, and then the last time I saw them, I, I actually hid in the car and I, I slipped down so they couldn't see me and I, sh I was shaking for about two hours after I saw them. So this has almost been six months later and I saw, I actually did think it was them for a really long time and they parked behind me and I didn't shake and I didn't get scared and I just stayed in my stillness and I realized that they no longer had any power over me. They never had power over me anyway. I gave them the power, I gave him the power. So I've obviously settled myself now. I've become the tree and he doesn't get the power. So blessings everybody. Thank you for tuning in. You know, like I go to talk for two minutes and I talk for 20. Lots of love.